Hello fellow survivors and welcome back to Road to 500 Days. Still here in Pleasant Valley, but not for long. We are done here now. We've done everything. We got all the supplies we want. Moose hides, bear hide, wolf, saplings. We got loads of food outside. We got loads of water. A lot of these things too, which I think will mostly stay here. And a whole bunch of stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much it for Pleasant Valley. We even have the the sled, which is here. But um, before we head out of here, there's a few things we need to do. We need to repair some clothes and just get ready to leave, really. But before we do any of those things, I'm going to get this car battery. Because we found the car battery in the bunker and... I need it for Milton, because the last one, if you go single void, now it's Mountain Town that we need to repair, and then we have to go back to Forsaken Airfield. And the thing is that uh, in Mountain Town, I know that there is not a car battery at that transmitter, so you have to find one. Now, there's a lot of cars in Mountain Town, but on Inglow especially, do I really want to gamble that I find one there? If I don't find one, there's no nearby region with cars. I would have to go and get one in... Uh, I think I, there was one in Desolation Point, or I have to go somewhere else, and I really don't want to do that. So just to be safe, I'm going to go and grab this car battery and drag it with me all the way to Milton. That is pretty much the plan. So that's what I'm going to do right now, and then we'll continue after. Uh, do I need some food for that? Not really, but we'll, we'll take... Uh... We don't really need anything because we're not going very far. Just over there and back again. All right, here we are. I think I'm going to get by without having a... Um, uh, oops, whoops, sorry, hold on, there we are. There we go, sorry. <laughs> uh, without having um, food with us, we're not going very far. So we're going to head straight there. There shouldn't be any bears around. Might be some wolves. Yeah, the wolves have respawned. I don't think I smell enough. To have be detected, it's just these two really. They will smell me eventually, but that's not a big deal. We're just gonna head straight to the bunker. We're gonna grab the um, what should we call it? The battery. We're gonna drag it back, and then we're gonna prepare to leave. And that's pretty much it. We'll definitely come back to Pleasant Valley because it connects to other regions as well. I'm going to do what, I, what I've done these past episodes with Pleasant Valley, where I've kind of like explored almost all of it and set up a base and mapped a decent chunk. I'm basically going to do that for every region. And I spent, I'm not sure how many days I spent there exactly, something like 15, 20 days. And uh, I'll do the same for all the other regions. So we're going to come back here for sure to, for one thing, go through it so we can go to Timor Mountain we can go to Ash Canyon oh I look forward to that I love Ash Canyon it's a fantastic region and uh, Blackrock of course which is uh, another challenge <clears throat> we're definitely going to go to Blackrock after Zone of Contamination uh, just because then we have the respirator as well we don't really need it in Blackrock though no don't really need it but it's just a funny thing to do to, to do <laughs> Yeah, I checked this before, but... but yeah, that's kind of the plan. Uh, so we'll definitely come back here passing through. And there's also a few places on the maps that we haven't mapped out yet. So we need to do that. I like making perfect maps. Not perfect maps, like you can't really get the maps you charcoal to be perfect because they um there are some areas you can't really access unless you cheat or put a lot of uh not cheat, but use dev developer console, which in this case would be cheating, I guess. Um, or if you do a lot of goating. <laughs> but I like to make it as uh, complete as possible. I did that on my old, old run. But yeah, so we'll be back to Pleasant Valley for sure. But for now, the plan is... Uh, wait, did I go too far? Uh, oh no. Should be it might actually be over there. Yeah, I think it may, may have gone slightly too far. 
is it up here? Might, might be up here actually. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think it is up here. Uh, yeah, so the plan now is... Uh, I plan pretty far ahead, but sometimes plans change. But at, as of right now, the plan is get battery, go to Mystery Lake, regroup a bit, go to Mountain Town, repair the transmitter, find the next uh, bunker, which is in Hush River Valley. And uh, I'll probably spend some town time in Mountain Town as well. Just to establish a base there and do some exploration. I don't think I'll do Hush River Valley. I think we'll do that another time. Although I look forward to that. That's a great region as well. And after we've done Mountain Town, we are going to go to Forsaken Airfield. Ow. To finish Signal Void. And seeing as we're already in Forsaken Airfield, we might as well then go to Zone of Contamination. And we're going to spend some time there. And that's going to be interesting with the poisoned wolves and all that stuff. Lots of loot though. We definitely need this <laughs> sled for that. We're going to be dragging lots of loot back. And then once we've done that, and we head back to Mystery Lake after all of that, and then we'll see. Then we'll go somewhere else. We'll probably go to Ashtore Valley or Ash Canyon or Black Rock or something. We'll figure that out. It depends. We'll, we won't no need to plan that far ahead. Okay, I think actually, uh, let's see. It's brain is it's four hours. It's a bit annoying, but I looted all this stuff. And I want the car battery, which is here. Zap. We'll take that. Heavy now. And I'm going to sleep for uh, a couple hours here. I looted all of this, right? Yeah, I did. We could actually... Uh, how am I doing clockwise? Yeah, I got more than enough. I might as well, as I'm here, grab these. See if there's anything obvious in the way. Uh, what happens if I grab this? That uh, doesn't really reveal anything. But we're warm now. Uh, I think we'll just leave. I was going to sleep here, but we warmed up doing that. So I think we'll just leave. Now let's have a look at something. So how, how slow am I now? So now I am six kilos over. And I walk basically like this. What if I drop the sled? And put the car battery in here. I move faster here, and if I carry it, how fast am I? Now, oh, pretty much the same as walking, so we're definitely going to do this then. <laughs> For as long as we can, that is. Can we drag it down slopes, actually? I know you can't really drag it up slopes, but can you drag it down slopes? I guess so. Spoke too soon, huh? <laughs> I guess not. It's gonna be the same thing. Yeah, it's gonna be the same thing. All right, and then we'll do this. Take that. Pick it up. Down we go. I'm missing a cattail. Let's just grab a cattail first. There's one over here. And uh, drop, load, in case, we'll go with the cattail, so I can have 12 cattails, although actually there will be some in Winding River, so it's not a big deal. Can I loot while doing this? <laughs> I was going to say, it'd be too easy. <clears throat> that was... Doesn't make marks in the ice, does it? No, I don't think so. Alright, let's go. Let's drag this car battery. Uh, I got in some comments asking how scurvy hasn't kicked in yet. Seeing as I'm on 100 and day 30. Uh, but you gotta remember that Scurvy was added to the game when this run was already far in. 
Uh, I don't remember exactly what day it was when I added scurvy to it manually. So remember that scurvy does not exist on old saves. So anything prior to Buried Echoes being released, which was uh, um, December 2023, any runs before that does not have scurvy in it. However, I used the mod to add scurvy to the game, which I did for this run, as well as my stalker run. But uh, while I'm not sure, I assume that when I manually added scurvy to this run, it probably started from zero. So the game, when I turned scurvy on for it, probably treated the run as if, from a scurvy point of view, this was day one. And it takes an interloper 20 days for scurvy risk to set in, uh, provided you don't need any vitamin C. And it hasn't been 20 days yet. I, I don't remember exactly, I have to look, but I think it's been something like 12 days maybe since I turned it on. So uh, yeah, in 10 days or something, we should see a risk, I think. If nothing appears in like 30 days, then uh, probably it didn't work to turn it on, but hopefully that uh, worked. If not, I'll look into turning it on. Not worth starting a whole new run just because scurvy didn't exist. I'd rather modify the file to turn it on. I did tell the developers that I think they should have added an option to turn it on and off for new save games. Pretty simple, just when you load the game, you just have a pop-up window that says, this is an old game. Would you like to enable scurvy? You can only make this choice once. Yes, no. Right? And then you turn it on and then that's it. Right? Uh, could just do that. Uh, I don't think they will do it now though, because now it's so far after <clears throat> that I don't think there's many players who's going to log on and be like, oh yeah, scurvy, yeah. So I don't think they'll do anything about it. But they have said that they're going to discuss the harvesting animations, yeah, they told me. Uh, right, so here we are. We're probably going to spend another day here because we need to uh, prepare for the journey. Which is primarily um, first aid soon. Uh, repairing some stuff and all that. And we're gonna, we're definitely gonna be heavy. I'm not too bothered about being heavy for most of the journey. So I can drag the, so like, I, if I'm like this, I'm a bit over, and then I can use the sled for the rest of the journey. And then uh, uphill, I'll just be a bit heavy, and that's fine. It's a little bit more effort to plan for Milton because I have to climb ropes, but it's not that hard. You can always just, you know, dump some stuff or whatever, and then go up. We'll see. All right, we're back home. Let's see. We can drop this car battery and put it somewhere for now. But. Uh... Put it over here. Couch. <laughs> and then we need to see what we can do to prepare for the journey. And I think it would be repairing some stuff. So let's have a look at what needs repairing. And I think there's a few things. This needs repairing. That doesn't necessarily need repairing. How are we doing with pelts? We got one. Okay, a load of gas. Let's grab a few gas. One, two, three, four, five. Why not? Uh, one of those is cured, and that's it. Well, I'm gonna repair this one then, because it's 61. So let's do that. Uh, sewing kit or fishing tackle, let's use fishing tackle. Why not? Doesn't really make a difference. But... There we are, sweet. 84, not that important. 89, it's fine. Then we have the bear coat. I do want to repair this. 73 isn't particularly low. You know, it's still 3 fourths. It's just that the warmth points is so significant because when this is at 100%, it gives you 6 degrees. But now it's only 4.3, so repairing this adds almost 2 degrees, which is a lot. So I'm definitely going to repair that. Then we will keep the other one here for future use. This time we'll use the sewing kit. There we go. Nice. Any of these? Um, 77? Uh, ah, it's alright. 
Uh, pants, 86, that's okay. 70 is a bit low. Do I want to repair that? I'm not sure. Let's think about it. Socks are terrible. These need repairing. The shoes absolutely need repairing. Let's repair the shoes. God, I need anything right about now. Uh, right. I didn't even repair the full amount. <laughs> I think that's probably it, actually, if I'm honest. 70%. I don't know. It's a rough repairing these two. Only got two day hides. These are close to kill, but I don't think it's necessary. How about my... Oh, 79. That's fine. Uh, I do think that we can maybe make some more arrows. Let's put this in here. Let's just grab some, uh, some food. Okay, eat the wolf meat. Remember the, the rule. Go. I don't think I need to take any of this food stuff, I don't think. Alright, uh, let's make some arrows. Because we, we might as well. Uh, we got five of those, two shafts, and then we can make a f some more shafts. We can make five arrows, which means we need 15 of these. There we are. And let's do that. This is why it's great to have everything ready in a regional base and have a workshop and everything. Wait, I didn't pick up a birch sapling. Whoops. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know if we can. Oh, I forgot to pick up um, tools as well, so it's going to take a little while to make these. Ah, that's alright. We're not in a hurry, are we? Uh, arrow shaft first. Then we'll make, we can probably only just make one or maybe maybe two arrows because of the uh, lack of tools. That's all right. Yeah, we can make two. We can start doing one, but I think it'll be cancelled. Hey, we got an Aurora. <laughs> nice. That's lucky. Let's see how many we can do. I could go out and see if there's a signal for a container. There we are. But I don't know, is that really worth doing? Because I, I already tried doing that in this area. I didn't find one. I found one uh, near the barn. But here, I don't think there is anything nearby. See, nothing. Nothing when I walked that way either. There was something by the barn. I could have a very quick look, just while we're at it. To see if uh, it beeps if I'm like over here or something. I'm not going to go very far though. I'm just going to literally see if it beeps in this direction. For a, uh, for a supply cache. But if it doesn't... Then I think there's no point. I'm not going to go around at night and look for it. Especially with a sprained ankle. But let's just take in the scenery for a little bit. Enjoy some aurora. And the, the lights that come with it. Which stun me every single time. Absolutely incredible. Uh, the aura is such an amazing mechanic in this game. If it didn't have the aura mechanic, it would still be a great game, of course. It's not essential at all. It's such a unique feature. You know? Not only 
Does the radio work now? That's a recent addition. But not only is it, is it beautiful, and you get a really spectacular scenery by just looking at it, it also changes the world. You know, lights come on, computers work, the radio works, so you can listen to music, piano music, and also the animals change. So this is a really, really special thing. Oh, I didn't pick these up. Well, let's do that then. Yeah, I forgot this uh, <clears throat> birch here. There's also a deer and a carcass over here, but we don't need that. No signals. I don't know how many supply caches there are. Um, but like I said before, the supply caches, on Interloper especially, really not important. Let's grab these. Supply caches are pretty much always empty. Or if they're not empty, there's something small in them, like cloth or something. I'm pretty sure you can find good stuff in it on Interloper 2, but to the same extent that you can find something in like a green container, for example, right? Can I map this? Yeah, it's all mapped, yeah. Okay, it's this part now. Um... I'm sure, you know, every now and then you'll find, like, a Machina or something in there. But generally speaking, I, uh, I don't think you'll find very much in them. I do know that in the past, I'm not sure if it's still the case, but in the past, you could actually get the technical balaclava in Desolation Point in a supply cache. So if you didn't know... You know, I've been repairing these uh, transmitter towers for signal voids. So I did the one in Forsaken Airfield, Bleak Inlet, uh, Pleasant Valley, and now Mountain Town I'm heading to. But there are two other towers to repair as well. Uh, there's one in Blackrock, and repairing that one uh, allows you to search for stuff in Blackrock, as well as in, I think, Ash Canyon and Timberwolf Mountain. Uh, maybe Pleasant Valley covers Timberwolf Mountain, I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, but these are not connected to a single void, they're just additional, an additional tower. And there's also a tower in Desolation Point, which covers Desolation Point and Coastal Highway. If you repair that one, you can look for supply caches in those regions. Uh, and at least in the past, it was possible to, um, can you get up here? It doesn't look like it's that steep. It looks like you should be able to get up here. I guess not. Um, in the past, I never found it myself, but there's a video by a YouTuber, Bashrope, who you should check out, by the way, if you would like sort of like very to the point, re thoroughly researched videos. It shows here's where everything is, here's how that works, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, you can check out his channel. He had a video showing that if you repaired the tower in Desolation Point, you could find a technical balaclava on Interloper in a supply cache there, uh, which was interesting. Um, but I I don't know if they removed it or not, but uh, that was before they added Signal Void to Interloper. And on Interloper, of course, uh, you get the technical balaclava as a reward uh, for finishing Signal Void. It's the only unique item clothing-wise in the game, in that sense, for, for Interloper. So they may have removed that. I don't know. But we're definitely going to repair all those towers too. And we will just be opportunists with these supply caches. If an Aurora is out and we're nearby, we'll pick one up. But we're not going to usually go looking for them, I don't think. Okay. Uh, I think we're just going to go to sleep. Oh, turn the radio on. Get music that way. Du, 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 du. Let's just eat this. 
go to sleep. Oh, sorry, have a drink. And ten hours. We don't need to sleep ten hours, but we're going to. All right. Now it's noon. We have full health. Everything is sealed. We're in good condition. I think it's time to go now. But now we got to do a bit of inventory. So we're not going very far. We're just going to Mystery Lake. And we need to bring the battery. So we can be heavy, but not so heavy that it's going to slow us down extremely. Oh, I forgot to put these down to cure. That's right. So let's do a little bit of inventory here. Put this out later. So we'll keep all the books. I would like to take all this stuff back. But because I'm bringing the car battery back, I'll bring this back another time. Not today. Uh, another time I'll, I'll bring this back. Um, yeah, this one can all stay here. And <laughs> all this fruit and stuff. Um, uh, combat pants. Maybe actually I should repair these combat pants. Uh, because they could act as good backups. So maybe do that. At least for a little bit. I don't really need to maintain them. Not really, but... Just... Just for safety. Then we got... All this stuff. I'm going to leave this here. We got fishing tackles too. And now we can refuel. We got that, we got that. I don't think there's any... Else. Charcoal, we can leave some charcoal here. Yeah. I think that's probably it, to be honest. And then we'll take this. I wonder if I can drop any of this and we'll leave all this other stuff for future sack, I think. Uh, I got some water. I need a bit more water, I think. Need is a, is a strong word. <laughs> Um, and then we got this, so next time maybe I'll bring some more and we can have six here, which is great. But we don't really need to because I always carry two. So I'll always have six here now, so I don't really need to bring more. That's great. And, uh, yeah, I, I think that's actually it. I think that's it for Pleasant Valley. There's no point. This, this can all stay here. We don't really need to bring any of this stuff with us. We got what we need. And these cooking ingredients. Can just stay here. Plus, uh, I can make uh, the pie if I want. The Ray House pie. I got the stuff outside for that. Oh, yeah, I guess that's it. Then we just need food. That's the only thing. So let's. Uh, it's not a very long journey. But nevertheless, we're going to take that. And we'll take also. I don't know. I don't think it's really necessary. We'll take two of those. And then we'll drop our gawa. Uh, and we'll put this in there. And then I think that's it for Pleasant Valley, really. Thanks, Pleasant Valley. Been good. We got a lot of stuff out of it. Got a base ready. Got everything you need in this house. Really, really good. It's nice and warm. Minus five only. Perfect. So let's go... Let's go to Mystery Lake. Let's double check. One last look before we go. Got that too. If I find all of these, I might put one in each base or something. Else. Be nine percent. They do deteriorate pretty fast. The only thing. <clears throat> all right. Barely slower than just normal walking. Let me just see if I drop it quickly. Yeah, see, it's pretty much the same speed. Pretty much the same speed. Yeah. And we'll go as... I think we can actually drag this all the way to the... Um, to the cave, right? Because we can't go up the shortcut we often do. That's near the rope. But what we can do is we can drag it along the river and then to the slope by the waterfall, all the way up to the pond, and then across the bridge to the cave. So we can drag this pretty far, I think. Yeah, 
Like I said in the last episode, I gotta admit, the I liked uh, the sled more than I thought I would. I didn't think I would like it that much, but uh, or really see the point of it. I know it's something people have requested a lot, but it's pretty good actually. I think I probably will always carry one around, or at least leave one in a base uh, where in the area that I'm at. Because it does give a lot more options. Uh, prim the, the primary function is definitely big game hunting. So if I'm carrying this one kilo thing and I go out and kill a bear, I can uh, drag the whole bear with me back to base. And that's really, really good. Same with a moose. But that, in that sense, has got really good use. Really good use. Uh, also for moving bases, and what I'm doing now is kind of like moving a base because I need this car battery and it weighs an absolute ton. And you know when I get to Milton, right, there's going to be a car battery on the cars. <laughs> but I'm not going all the way to Milton, checking all the cars and not finding a car battery and then have to go back here again. That's like so much back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, we ain't doing that. But I think we probably can pull the sled up hill here. Not that far. You know, we're not even heavy because the Trava is behind, so that's not making us heavy. So we don't actually burn that much calories or fatigue or anything. It's just pretty easy. But yeah, it's a good addition to the game. I know it's one of the most requested items. If, if you ask people what you want to add to the Long Dark, which happens pretty much every week on Reddit, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> um, the most common thing that people ask for is the sled. People ask for that all the time. Uh, some people say to jump would be a close second. But, you know, now we have this uh, sled, so... Because people like loot, and especially on lower difficulties, there's so much loot all the time. That often it's hard to decide what to leave behind, and with the sled it's a bit easier. Now granted there's some terrain where you can't really use it, and you can't really use it with ropes, but some journeys is fine, like here, uh, you could use this in all the Pleasant Valley. Forsaken Airfield, it's fantastic, you can probably bring it pretty much everywhere in Forsaken Airfield. Kimmelf Mountain and Ash Canyon is a bit awkward. But other than that, it's, it's fine. Yeah, this is pretty good. If I was carrying the the battery now, it would definitely be slower than this. Because I would be heavy. But this is pretty pretty good. And I can actually drag this all the way there. Alright, Pleasant Valley. I'll see you later. It's been a pleasure. Is that why it's called Pleasant Valley? I'm sure. Either that or someone had a really good sense of humor. But it's been good. It's a good region. This was actually the third region ever added to the game. So the first region was Mystery Lake. And this was all in early access. And then it was Coastal Highway. And then it was Pleasant Valley. And Pleasant Valley, I, th I think it is still the largest region in the game. Uh, Sonic Contamination is pretty big. Forsaken Airfield is massive, so maybe it's bigger. I'm not really sure. But yeah. Can the Trava go through here, is the question. Depends how it's calculated. It can't. No space for Trava. Beep, beep, beep. Mm. Oh yeah, Pleasant Valley is great. A lot of blizzards and um, the wide open space in the middle sometimes can be quite treacherous, but there's a lot of stuff here, you know. There's quite a lot of buildings, especially in the middle part of the map and the southern part. You know, you got the radio hut, you got the farm, Thompson's Crossing. And then you get a lot of stuff like, you know, the plane crash. There's a bunker now, but there's also the, the bunker that was always there. 
There's a load of caves, a load of bears, a lot of wolves too. But this is a, a place that you can survive in for a long, long, long time. Especially because it's also uh, a fishing hut. So you got everything you need. When you ask people what their favorite base is, actually not that many people say the farmstead, even though it is a pretty good base. Seeing as you got wolves, just out just outside your door, you got wolves, deer, rabbits, and bear. And then you have uh, moose not far as well, and fishing a little bit further. So it's a really, really good base. Uh, but most people prefer camp office in Mystery Lake or trappers. Uh, I use trappers as my main base, of course, but. <sighs> If you ask me what my favorite base is, this pack is getting kind of heavy. It's probably Timberwolf Mountain, I think. In Mountainous Hut. I also got everything you need right next to it. And it's just, it's just a nice location. It's colder though, so you gotta be warm there. Alright, as you can see I'm walking slow now. Slower than if I had the sleds. So this is uh this is interesting. It will make it easy to transport stuff between bases. So yeah. Thanks, Pleasant Valley. It was fun. We got moose, like three bears or something. The travail, the the bunker, load of stuff. Yeah, it's been good. We mapped a lot of you. Missed some stuff though. But hey, can't get everything. This is still good. We'll be back. We'll be back. Alright, see ya. Now the big question here. I, I gotta just check this. I don't think it's a good idea, but <laughs> I just want to see if you can actually use the Trevan here. <laughs> I'm assuming you can't. I just want to check. Oh, if you can, it's like really impractical. Invalid location, okay. Now there's a surprise. Let's see if the coal has respawned. We don't really need it though, I suppose. Da, 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 da. I'm not going to be able to carry this load for much longer. Oh, you're in luck, Astrid. We got a Trawa for you. I will admit that I am looking forward to some of the new zones we're going to. So, we're going to go to Milton, of course, first. And I don't tend to spend a lot of time in Milton. Uh, I, I call it Milton. This mountain town is really the region. Milton is this, the town in mountain town. That is called Milton. I don't go there very often because it's one of those regions that it, it, it's just too easy. Because there's so many houses and stuff. And lower difficulty especially is it's flooded with loot. But it's, even on Intel, there's quite a lot of stuff to find. And also it's, uh, it's kind of non-linear. Because all the passageways kind of lead everywhere uh, in, in almost like a horseshoe shape. Uh, so it's not that fun to navigate. In the past, uh, Mystery Lake had a bit more varied um, pathing, path but they removed some of those things. So I don't find Mystery Lake, a, no, not Mystery Lake, Mountain Town, a particularly exciting region. Probably one of my least favorites because I don't know. <clears throat> there's not so much to really do there other than looting the houses. I feel. Uh, well, Hastur Valley near by is a really cool region, for example. But I will stay there for a while. There are some good things. You know, there's uh, the plane crash. It's only nine. Oh, condition goes on fast. It was what eighty nine when I started. So uh, it's a, uh, it's it's got a, a stim in it. It's got what else has it got? Um, I think there's a, I think the jackrabbit firmus is in the plane crash along with the stim. There's the recipe in Grey Mother's house. There is also um, two 
six hub stoves in Mountain Town, which is unusual and very cool. Great Mother's House, which I think is called Townhouse in Survival. And the farm, Paradise Meadows? Can this go up here? No, I didn't think so. What about here? Sideways. We're gonna, we're gonna beat this. Sideways. No space. Alright, fine. You win. You win. I'm not sure I can carry much more. Uh, what else is there in Mountain Town? Memento. There's some. There's matches. Um, coffee. You can always find coffee there in the bank. But there are, quite, there are some good things there. I don't, know, I don't know. It's one of those regions that never really excites me. The, there's one exception though, which we are going to spend some time in, but later, and that's the basin. The Mountain Town Basin is an interesting place. I like being there. <laughs> it's almost like a sub-region within a region. When I started playing The Long Dark and I was playing on Voyager, this is like six years ago, six plus years ago. Um, it took me a long time to realize you could actually go down in the basin in, in Mountain Town. Because I just thought that was scenery. And then suddenly I just looked at it one day and I was like, it seems too fleshed out for not being able to go there. And then sure enough, I uh, I decided to just look around and I found the rope anchor. I was like, oh yeah, you can go down here. And there's a whole new place now. Suddenly the map got so much bigger. Uh, so that's, uh, that's cool. I do like that. And we are going to go there. Because in one episode, um, I'm going to do what's called a hibernation strategy. Uh, you'll see some players do that when they are in very late game, which is, is, is there's past time a lot to get the bear to come back and that sort of thing. And they can do a hundred days in a couple of hours type of thing, you know. But that's a bit of a bore and a bit of a grind. But I once did uh, a 50 day stretch in Mountain Town Basin. Uh, for research purposes, as it were, to research spawn rates. And I quite enjoyed doing that. And that involved some hibernation, things like hunting an animal, and then l seeing how long it takes for it to respawn, and so on. And I thought that was quite fun to do, a little research session. And I might do that uh, again, uh, just to show you what I'm talking about. And that's going to happen later in the game, though, after... After seeing the void and all that stuff. And then we'll do that. So, uh, then we'll go there and we'll, we'll do lots of hunting. We'll establish a secondary base in the cave in, uh, in Milton Basin. And we'll do some hunting and we'll try logging uh, when we kill them and under what conditions and so on and so forth. And uh, see what happens. Oh, I can't even get up here. Yeah, <laughs> we can. Okay, here's the question. <laughs> Can it go across the dam? So we'll do that at some point, but that's going to be in the far future. And just to show you how that works. Alright, so you are. You could pull this all the way. I'm guessing you can't pull it off the stairs. I didn't. On steep slopes, yeah. Okay. Right. Ah, I gotta admit, we pulled that pretty far. This pack is too heavy to carry. That was pretty far. And now we gotta pull it through Mystery Lake. That should be fine. Mystery Lake is flat. I'm trying to think like what regions are good for the terroir. And I think nearly all of them are. Most of them are flat-ish. They all have slopes and things, but not so much that uh, it's a nuisance. There are some regions though where it won't be as useful. I think uh, Ash Canyon is pr it's probably the least useful in Ash Canyon because there's so many levels. Um, I don't even know if it works on the bridges. The exception would be like if you kill a moose in say Bitter Marsh in Ash Canyon, you might want to use the, the sled to drag it from there to Angler's Den, for example. Timberwolf Mountain also nice, useful, although again killing the moose, dragging it back, that, that'd be useful. Blackrock, I think it'd be alright in Blackrock generally. 
Because Mali is fine, Mystery Lake is fine. Like, there's always some areas that are difficult, but generally speaking, it's flat and accessible. Coastal Highway will be fine, except for the upper levels here and there. Um, same with Desolation Point, Leak Inlet, Fallen Musking is all flat. Broken Railroad, yeah. Uh, Hushford Valley. Yeah, yeah, probably be right. Yeah, it's for most regions, I think you can use the, the sled uh, generally. Let's turn this on. It's not that dark, but I think uh, I don't think you, the viewer can see that well if I don't have it. All right. So this is a good journey. I like trying new things also. So when the content patches come out, there are certain things that I try right away. New regions especially, but then other things that are essential. Oh, okay, we got to try this out, figure out how that works. And there's other things I don't. And the, the sled was one of them I didn't actually try. I've seen people use it, obviously, but never tried it myself. But I got to say, I, I, I like it more than I thought I would. The good, good, uh, good sled. And also I've been doing some experimenting now, which has been fun. Can you get up this slope? Can you get up this one? Yes, no. Can you do it in the dam? No. And it's fun to try these things out. Uh, it's like I haven't tried out scurvy, because let's see, we'll deal with that when it happens. <coughs> and those sort of things. There's always so much to do. Uh, someone asked me once, uh, what's what's the fun really in playing the game if you know the maps and you know all the mechanics, so survival even on the interloper is not really that hard, then what's the struggle really? What's, what's the point of playing survival when it's too easy? Well, I think that's because the Long Dark is more than a survival game. It's, it's a, it's an experience. And uh, there is a certain pleasure in being immersed in the world that you're playing in. And for me, I feel more immersed mastering a hard difficulty like this, which is difficult, but not that difficult. But I feel like it's hard enough to warrant a certain challenge, and mastering that challenge is very rewarding. Unlike, for example, extremely difficult things like Nagoa or something like that, which is so hard that it becomes too punishing. Well, this is not as punishing. And that means there's a certain element of a challenge to it, uh, even when you have mastered the game. But more than that, it's just fun to be in the world. It's fun. It's fun to make it your own. Like, it's kind of paradoxical that a game that's has so much emphasis on isolation and loneliness feels so much at, like home isn't that weird it feels nice to be in this world it feels nice to be in Great Bear Island and make the whole world really your home and do what you want with it you're left behind you're the only person here and this is all up for grabs and it's basically your massive back garden in a way. And you can do what you want and you can go where you want and yeah, you gotta stay alive though. But it's, I don't know, it's great. Oh, come on. Well, a certain angle. Yeah. Small things, eh? I don't know. I think this game is more than just survival. It is definitely the most unique survival game there is. But uh, it's, it's more than a survival experience. It's an immersive experience. There's a certain sense of belonging in this world. Where you feel at home in the harsh winter landscape. And you feel that you have the capability to conquer it. While at the same time, the game isn't so easy when you mastered it, that everything is a breeze. It still presents challenges or difficulties or nuances. Like now, for example, the wolves are in the way and I drive this sled. <clears throat> that sort of thing. 
Oh, there may have been stuff I could have put in the sled there, but we'll take this route. I don't know, I just... Let me know in the comments what, how, what you think. Uh, how you feel about the game and playing it, even if you think it's easy. Um, for me, it feels like it feels like home. It feels like somewhere I want to be. I don't know if I would want to be in real life. I really like the the slow pace of it all. I like how you can just conquer this world and make it your own and yeah. Let's keep going. Actually, hold on. Eat that. It's a beautiful world, is what it is. It's a beautiful world to be in, and it's 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 fun to play. And you never run out of things to do because if you enjoy being in the world then you'll always have something to do, because it's your world. <laughs> hmm. That was... Looked like that was gonna be a hit, but it wasn't. But yeah. I will say also what's interesting is that when you have the terroir like this, it kind of creates a different kind of content. Because well, if I didn't have this, I would be doing the same thing. I'd be walking around and I would uh, talk and I would, you know, do the same thing. But because your hands are restricted, it's pretty much just walking I'm doing, walking and looking. Well, normally I'd be like walking and I'd stop and I'd interact with this, so I'd look at this and... You do a bit more things, you take different routes, you take different shortcuts, which I'm not doing with this. So then there's a stronger need for narration. But it's kind of nice. But yeah, please let me know in the comments how you feel, like if you... If you feel the game is easy, it doesn't matter if it's an interloper or a pilgrim, it doesn't make a difference. That's not the point. The point is that when you play, if you feel you have mastered the game as you play it, and the survival element is is not the main threat anymore, you kind of conquered the survival element, it's, it's, it's not absent. It's still always going to be there and you can still die, <clears throat> but generally speaking, you've got it under control. What is your motivation for going back in the game then? And for me at least, it's to be in the world. To be... to ha That the world is empty. Except for you in it. Which makes it your world to explore freely. And... Just be in. And it's massive also, which helps. There's another thing about the Long Dark, which is fantastic. Which I could talk about for ages. Uh, let me have a drink first. <laughs> and this is a po <laughs> this is pretty close to a podcast at this point because it's me walking with the sled and talking, which is fine. I did actually have a poll in the past if. Um, people would be interested in a podcast, which I said I was going to do, but I never really got around to doing it. <clears throat> I might do it one day. Or I might make some videos that also work as podcasts. The campfire videos, more or less do that. Uh, but yeah, there is another aspect of the long dark that I could talk about for ages, which is almost like a paradox. But it's a wonderful paradox. And that is, have you ever wondered how a game that's really about loneliness can create such a wonderful community. Because the Long Dark community is incredible. So obviously on this channel, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, then I have my own sub-community as it were. Uh, 
my viewers and subscribers and I have my Discord, but there are other sub-communities. I mean, there's other content creators for one, but there's also uh, uh, Lone Dark on Facebook and, and Reddit and uh, the Hinterland forums. And there's a Long Dark Discord as well with quite a few members. And everyone, everyone's really nice. Uh, it's a very friendly community, very non-toxic, you know? Sure, there's, there's always one, right? There's always a rotten apple here and there. There's someone who's offensive or says something or whatever, you know? There's always someone. And also, no one's perfect, you know, of course. But overall, it's a very friendly community, very inclusive. People help each other out. On Twitch, um, people are extremely supportive of each other's uh, success in terms of streaming. So if you want to start streaming the long dark, if you are in the community, then the community will support your growth. So if you hang out in chat on Twitch with the other content creators, and then you say, oh, actually I'm gonna start streaming, they will start shouting you out. Oh, go check this person out, you know, drop him or her a follow or, or they a follow, you know, whatever. Uh, well, before I started uh, creating content, before I started streaming, um, <clears throat> I was active in the Twitch community for about a year or so. I'm not sure exactly how long. And uh, I was in like chats with like Athenon and Kimiota and Once and Only and some other people. And uh, so they all knew who I was. I was one of the regular chatters, right? And then one day I thought, you know what, I'm going to try streaming. I had tried streaming before. Uh, in 2018 and decided it was not for me. It was too complicated and uh, I didn't think people would want to watch me. But then with the long dark, well, let's let's try again. I feel like I could have some fun doing it. And then because everyone knew I was, you know, they all shouted me out right away. Oh yeah, go check out Zach, you know. He's new as a streamer and this and that. And it, in, in no time did I reach 50 followers. Uh, which is what you need on Twitch to become affiliate and you can actually earn money. Uh, you need 50 followers. You need to have streamed, what is it? Uh, is it five days? Or 12 hours or something? I can't, I can't remember anymore. And you need to have an average of three viewers. And I got that pretty fast because of the community. Right? And that's happened several times since that someone else who's been um, sometimes in my chat, sometimes in other people's chat, say, hey, I'm going to start streaming. Oh, yeah, okay, we'll go check, check them out. And they get a couple hundred followers pretty fast. From there, it's a bit up up to each each person uh, from, from there. But to get you started, the community is very, very helpful. And when people ask questions, people are willing to help. Uh, you don't get people slagging each other off or saying hurtful things. And people are always happy to help and share experiences and talk about the game. And it's a very, very inclusive game. A very friendly community. Very wholesome. Very positive-minded. And just overall a great community. And it's funny that or paradoxical that a community or, or that a game about isolation about loneliness has such a friendly community that is unable to play with each other isn't that right it's funny isn't it uh, i think part of the reason um the community is so friendly and non-toxic is is also partially to do with the age of people who play it. So for example, on, on my channel, uh, a, not quite half, but a bit less than half of all of my viewers are 35 or older. Meaning they are people who are a bit more mature in life, maybe have families and careers. And uh, they aren't, for example, say, teenagers have to prove themselves or something like that, which you might get in, like, shooting games and that sort of thing. And uh, there's also quite a lot of retired people who play this game. And, you know, 
I think that contributes to this sort of calm atmosphere. Not implying by that that young people are not patient and calm and friendly. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that uh, uh, older, the older generation have a bit more, what should we say, patience maybe? It's a slower paced game. <laughs> Suited for us old timers, such as myself and others. <laughs> uh, but that's just one variable. I think that um, because the game itself is so calm, uh, so calm and so beautiful, and gives you so much autonomy, and there's no competitive element to it at all, it also invites uh, friendship. There's no competition. Sure, we could all compete who does Hopeless Rescue the fastest, or who does this, or whatever. Who has survived the longest, sure, yeah, yeah, sure, we could do that. But those are more like friendly little competitions. There is no leadable, there's no real sense of who's the, who's the best and any kind of competition. Everyone is just completely doing their own thing. And everyone is happy with them doing their own thing and others doing their thing. And that fosters a very much a community that's like, Hey, how are you doing? How's your run going? Oh, that's great. How's your, my run going? Oh, yeah, it's going well. Thanks. Uh, hey, do you know how to get to the gold mine in Ash Canyon? Sure, yay. Just, just go, go ahead. It's no problem. Uh, what, are you going to keep it a secret? Are you going to keep it like a knowledge to yourself how to do that? No, you're going to tell people. So it's a, it's a great game. It's, a, it's not just a great game, but it has great community. And that was uh, the Long Dark Podcast. Yeah, tune in next week for uh, a discussion on uh, on moose migration patterns. Okay, well, here we are. We actually dragged this thing all the way from the dam. Took a lot of damage, though, I must say. Uh, we're going to take this inside. And we're going to stay here for the night, for sure. I'm not going to bother repairing that. <clears throat> uh, let's refuel this. I got some misc stuff. Yeah, I could talk about that topic for much longer. I've been in old and long dark Twitch for like six years now. Right, it's been a little while since I've been here, hey? So all this stuff. <laughs> but the only thing we really need is uh, this. I'm gonna drop it for the time being, though. Put this here. <clears throat> All right. Uh, is there anything to like leave here? Uh, I don't think so. Everything I brought was just stuff. If I didn't have the car battery, I would have brought some more stuff. Uh, this though, repairing this. Dear hide and kill guard. I might repair this. Mm, wait, how long does it take to repair? Now, a team, we can do that. I think. Let's do it. Let's grab one of these. One of these. And it does repair 45. Oh, okay. That's alright. Uh, do it anyway. I don't know how... What? Oh, okay, well, fine. I'm gonna pass a bit of time so I can sleep a bit longer until it's daylight. Uh, I think that's probably good enough. Uh, let's eat this. Then drink that. And yeah, let's sleep like eight hours or something, I think. Um, yeah. There we go. Uh, it's now light. I drink. Let's see what we got here. So we will do... I want to repair this. 55. I'm guessing you can repair 50 at a time. I don't know. Uh, let's just do it once. And then next time I'll leave it for longer before I repair it. Yeah. We also got, you know, so much stuff. Maybe I should repair... I got so many rabbit pelts, which is good, of course. I think I might repair the like, gloves. Let's just do it. I'm going to finish this sewing kit. 
Uh, is there anything else? Nah, not that. 69. I, I guess. How many there hides? I got quite a lot of there hides. The thing is, though, that I think I will wait because I got 28 degrees plus. But we're going to Mountain Town now, right? We're going to Mountain Town. Well, that, this actually would be a nice feature to add. If I could click on the different regions and get up the region map rather than doing this, that would be nice. Uh, so we're going to Mountain Town now. And I don't think... The thing about Mountain Town is that the clothing isn't that important. I think Mountain Town is probably the one region with the least amount of open space that makes you cold because there's just so much stuff in it, right? You got, um, you can't see it obviously, but uh, you got a load of caves. So when you come there from, from, um, from Mr. Legs, like, well, you got the cave system, then you have a cave before the rope. When you get up the rope, you have the orca station, the gas station. Then you got the mountain town itself, the Milton, a load of houses there. You go up towards the plane crash. You got a cave on the way. You got a cave in the plane crash. Oh, that's a poor cave. You got a cave on the other side of the plane crash. You got uh, a cave to Hushra Valley. You got the church. You got the trailer. You got the farm. You got uh, even the office by picnic tables. You got the cave in Milton and the cave on down the roads. And it, there's so many places to warm up in in Milton. I think really a lot of places. All right, let's see. Let's update our journal a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, we did all this stuff. Uh, so now it's take car battery to Milton. I mean, the rest is self-explanatory. Uh, this is no longer true. I did this. I took all the stuff back. So that's gone. Uh, this is probably true. This is true. And that's true. And all this stuff is true. Gold. So have I done any of these things, actually? Uh, and no. We killed... We have killed Fluffy. We have killed Scruffy. We are not killed Sketchy. Uh, I think I may have caught all fish types. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I think, yeah. Loads. Loads just means food. Let me have all this stuff. I have two hammers and trappers, really? I'll start with Dave plus Toe. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember that now. Um, oh yeah, here we go, I killed these, yeah. So much to do. <laughs> oh yeah, there are two hammers here. Um, where would I take the hammer, the extra hammer? So, oh I know. <laughs> We need to take that hammer to Forsaken Airfield. Okay. Remind me. Let me put that little note there. So, because I, I'll forget. Yeah. When going to FA, bring a hammer. Probably can find a hammer in Sonic Contamination. But, because we don't need it here. We got already the hammer in the, all the forges. Well, of course, the forge in Forsaken Airfield too. And then you can have one here in Trappers as a backup. And if I find more hammers, they can go to a fishing hut. Yeah, I think that works just fine. Cool. Uh, oh, there's a regional base missing here, um, which is. There's two missing. Which is uh, Fuller Muskeg, which is Spencer's. I don't remember. I think there's water there. And then there's BI, uh, that's like worker residences. I think there's food there. I don't remember. <coughs> All right. Base is looking good. Good stuff. Our forbidden items are still here the bullets, hunting knife, cardboard matches. <laughs> Load of stuff. Yeah, looking good. 
Uh, let's go outside and grab some food. Okay, that's good to know. It's all cooked. We got six up stove. Wow, I six of these and I forgot I had so many pots. Alright, let's eat these. Less calories. And as I saw, this was broken. Now ah, I still got the tracks, huh? Really? That's cool. You can see where I came. Look at that. I love that the tracks stay. I guess they stay until this wind, I guess. Is this broken? I don't think so. There you go. That's cool. I love the tracks. Such a nice touch. Half the fun. Okay. Hey! Hello! Do I need to kill you? No, but I'm going to. Because um, you have a bear hide on you. So uh, why don't you join the party? We don't have to cook you right now. But we can kill you right now. And we can grab the hide. And uh, then we have an extra bear hide. And then we can cook the stuff later. We don't need to do that right now. Yeah. Hey bear. Come here. Okay. Let's try not to die in one hit. Come back here, you. Told you to come back here. I think I missed a headshot on him when I uh, when he was standing there by the by the trappers. I think I missed a headshot on him. I probably hit him in the shoulder or something. Uh, one hit and he should be dead. Let's see where this arrow landed. I didn't plan on doing this, but seeing as he was here, where did the arrow land in the end? Did it land up there? Trying to shoot over this. See if it would land somewhere here and hit him was the idea. I think it probably landed up there. Don't see it anyway. Where's the blood trail? There it is, okay. Where did he go? Hmm. I don't think he's dead yet, so let's just have a look at statistics. Uh, bears killed. Where's bears? Well. I'm looking for my arrow. Let's go and do that, because I already lost track of the bear, so. I might come back here. Did my arrow, I think I heard a little clonk noise. The arrow may have landed up here. I should have actually left a couple arrows back in Pleasant Valley. Let's see, is the arrow... Ow. I didn't think it was <laughs> that big of a fall. <laughs> Let's see here. Can I get up here? Mm, yeah. I don't see my arrow. I'm not sure exactly where it landed. I don't think it landed up there. There it is. Found it. Gaia. Alright, now we gotta... Oh, cloth, I'll just use the bandages. It's fine. Alright, so where's the bear is the question. I, don't, I didn't see where he went. But if he doesn't bleed out... He will make its way uh, back here. And I'll quarter him and use the sled. Is he dead yet, actually? Dead. 
He's dead. Okay. So there's 13 bears killed, so he's dead. Uh, let's find him then. I don't know where he is, but we should find him with crows. Let's listen for crows. I'm guessing he's around here somewhere. I've never felt so cold in my life. Yeah, I'm not too worried about the cold. I can't hear anything. I don't think he's gone that far. There's some crows over here. There he is. We need to bandage, so... Yeah. Because of this guy right here. close. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> you tried to bamboozle me with that turn, huh? Alright. Question, should I use a match? I don't know. I... Look at all these arrows. That's, uh... Doesn't seem normal. I think they're all pointing at the bear. Like, here he is! <laughs> I think I hit him five times though, right? What? Oh, there's one here. In him. <laughs> yeah, five, right? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, should I use a match? Hmm... Let's let's just use a match, shall we? Don't have to be greedy. Just to make things a bit <coughs> easier. Come on, little fire. I don't think we need to make any water or anything, but I guess we could. Oh wait. Okay, uh, and got minus six, all right. Have a drink. We'll grab this wolf if we can, but coal. I don't think we need the coal. Yeah, and we'll just do this. Uh, this water will evaporate, probably. Yeah, it will. This might not. And then we'll do this. Uh, hello? I should be warm, it was minus eight. Oh well. There we go. Okay. <laughs> you got all the stuff? I don't want to quarter this guy. An hour? No, we're not doing that. I'm gonna leave that guy. Uh, let's just heat up this uh, tea here and drink it. Alright, good enough for me. Now we're going to drop our trusted little sled. We're going to put our stuff in there. And all this stuff too. Shouldn't that be... Yeah, there it is. There you go. Nice. I think we have to go this way.
Well, this is exactly what I was talking about. This is the main use of the sleds. You know, you kill a big animal and you gotta bring it back to base. I must say that's a pretty big game changer in, in the time fashion at least. Because before, if this had been in that kill, then um, I would probably still use the fire. And I would have uh, done what I usually do. I would probably harvest a few kilos, cook a bit of meat, harvest some more, cook some more, and just cook, cook meat and make water while I either quarter the rest of the bear or harvest the rest of the bear and then drag what I can back to base. I know you've seen some of my earlier videos, including this series, I believe, where I've done things like dropped a bunch of items in my base so that I carry very little and then I go and pick up all the meat and stuff and then I come back. There's a lot of back and forth, back and forth. But that was just how, how the game was. That, that was part of the game. That's what you had to do if you want to take it back to base. And I really felt the need for a sled because I guess on interlope you don't have that much loot, right? But for this situation, I gotta say it's really handy. <laughs> it's really handy. It, it, it does make it easier. And uh, to be fair, I don't think I miss out uh, by not going back and forth as much. Just remember that you are going to hear people say, Back in my day, we had to drag all the meat by hand and we had to go back and forth like 50 times. You new players don't know what it was like before. When you didn't have a thermos and we didn't have a sled. <laughs> Good old times. But that's what I like about this run also. So I did 500 days before, uh, a few years ago. Although that was not recorded. It was streamed, but it wasn't recorded for the most part anyway. And um, what I like about doing it here is that because it start, this run started when the DLC came out, it also represents the progression of the game. If you have been watching all the episodes so far, well then first of all, thank you, you are awesome. And uh, it means a lot to me, so thank you for that. Uh, but if you have been watching it also, then there's quite a big, big difference between episode one and this one. Ignoring the loot bugs, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's not in the game in Jesus episode one. Cold. There's no sled, there's no travail, there's, uh, well, there's no sonic contamination. There is no uh, new clothing items. There's no fishing tackles, you know, all this stuff. Not fishing tackles, um, tip-ups, I was going to say. All right, look at this. Look at this go. Dragging a whole bear back to base. And that is the stuff, isn't it? This is the future. And most things are traversable if you just take the right route. I may have even taken a longer route, maybe. I think actually in hindsight it would have been faster, it would have been go the other way around. Go via deadfall, and then up the same way I did earlier. I think that would have been faster than what I just did. Ah, oh, that's alright. Yeah. But well, the main reason though, that this makes things easier and faster. But the thing about the long dark is though, do you need to do things faster? You know, it's not like we're low on time. I'm not sure I can carry much more. Okay, I'll do all this inside, and we're done for for this. All right. Take all of this inside. Okay. 
Drop the bear hide here. Oh, I'm actually trying to show the guts. And let's just start harvesting this. Does this show up in animations? Oh my god, it does. Really? It actually shows you do this on a meat bag. Oh, there isn't really much to say. Just me being on the floor with a wobbly camera. Alright, well that's done. How about this one? Let's switch things up, make it interesting. Alright, well, we got four more of this, so, uh... Sorry, viewers. Well, we just gotta sit through this. Yeah, a lot of meat. We don't really care about that though, because we already have a lot of meat. But even more meat for the base? Why not? But the main reason I wanted this bear was because we're approaching a late game now where respawn times get longer and longer and longer and longer. Now, there is a system to it, which I don't remember exactly what works and what day the system changed, but who cares about that? What matters is that the longer you play, the longer the respawn timer becomes. So bears become rarer, effectively. And I want the hides. The meat and guts, ah, that's important. But the hides, because I need the hides to repair my bear coat. And also in the past, I would need it to repair my bedroll eventually, but that's not so much of an issue now because we got the ptarmigan bedroll. But that's what I wanted it for. So when I saw him, oh yeah, I mean, I'm going to go to uh, Milton after, and then probably I'll go to... Uh, uh, Forsaken Airfield, so I might as well kill him now, and then when I come back from Forsaken Airfield, probably he's to be spawned again. <clears throat> this is all cooked. We'll put a little meat pile here, and we'll sort it by weight, so we get all the big pieces. Drop all of that. And then we have little scraps, which we can put like, I don't know, put that over here, or something. Uh, here, in this corner over here. These are little scraps. There we go. All right, look at that. That was great. That was a success for sure. We got it. Cool. Uh, let's grab a couple of these. And uh, yeah, I think just wait until the next day, really. We won't cook anything. We don't really need to. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's pass a bit of time. We can stay for 10 hours. Well, it doesn't have to be 10 hours, but at least until it's, it's further in the day. I don't care about dehydration damage right now. I think this is probably good enough when we get to midnight. Yes, it's fine. Let me eat this. Let me have a drink. And then we sleep for 10 hours. And there we go. All right. <clears throat> Get another piece of meat. Of course it's sunny, which means I have to cook now, right? <laughs> nah. Just because it's sunny and we can cook doesn't mean we have to. Yeah, that was great. That was quick also. That was a quick bear hunt. All right. Okay, fellow survivors. I think that's it for now. I thought this would be a very short episode, but actually it took a little while to drag everything back here. And then we did a hunt as well. So yeah. <laughs> well, here we are. Back at base. We had a fun time in Pleasant Valley, I think. I think it was a big success. Really, that, that base is almost as strong as this base now. So yeah, it's looking really good. Really, really good. And uh, now we're off to Mountain Town. Repair the next tower and just sort everything out and continue seeing the void. That's going to be fun. So with that, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time, survivors. Bye-bye.